Hey everybody, and we're live. Welcome to Mixed Life episode. I don't know even. I have no idea what number it is. I didn't even look before I started today. Seventy-one. I want to say. Shit the bed, man. Shit the bed. That's awesome. Seventy-one. Yeah. How's everybody doing tonight? We're uh, we're gonna be a little bit of a slow starter today. We are. I this is a new time slot, and I didn't anticipate a few things, so I am not as prepared as normal, which is not very much ever, anyways. Um, I just spilled juice all over my hand because I can. I have yet to figure out how much juice a, re, a recurve can hold. <laughs> uh, it's entirely variable, and you'll never put the right amount in. Never, dude. Like I, because I'm not squonking it, which I realize is like a travesty. Yeah, um, but I don't have a squonk mod yet. Uh, even though I talked about it like the last like ten shows, and then, um, but I still haven't done it yet. So like, invariably, I just it's easy to overfill if you're not squonking. And see, I've just been like, I gave up on trying to drip it. I've just been squonking it, squonking fucking menthol through it. It's been working out fine for me. But as a desk piece, it's like it's incredible. Like it's the best RDA I've ever owned for flavor. Like it's super spectacular. Other other than the fact that I spill shit on myself every time I touch it, <laughs> it's impressive that you get it to leak that much too. Which is, yeah, when well, you're squawking, like the little tiny holes, you get a little bit of leeway in terms of filling it up. So I've been like a I've been like a cheap ass, right? And I just keep buying these fucking thirty mil from Bull City every time yeah. I order. Right, like, uh, so I don't, uh, I don't ever fucking, because like, it's just easy and convenient, and they just, but you can't like really control how much uh, you have coming out of there. What build do I have in there? Uh, the lights are shitty in here, but I have uh, one of these Watofo Juggernaut uh, coils that they sent me um, when I ordered some stuff from Vapor Dini. These guys, they threw it in. It's like a point. Three well, it's point three on this in the size of the coil or whatever, but they're like kind of short, so you can get like an extra full wrap out of them. If you just like wrap them around halfway on each side, and then it fits perfectly without having to cut it. Yeah, I've been using uh I actually got some coils from clean af coils when I was at that vape convention. So I'm using like triple core aliens, and it's probably a waste for just vaping menthol, but they were built and they were sitting there and they're very nice. So. Yeah, they were they were pretty nice. They sent me these uh these frame staples too from Coilology that I really like. I really like these. These are pretty cool, but I'm kind of trying to save some of them. Um, the Juggernaut's pretty cool. I don't know if I like it any more than a regular Fuse Clapton, though. I really feel like Fuse Clapton is like the pinnacle of performance for me. It it's like plenty of surface area, and it does. I don't need all the extra shit, and I vape like pretty low wattage anyways. So I'm kind of probably wasting the Juggernaut's potential by only vaping it at 35 watts. Yeah, I, I will say I've dripped some stuff on this with like the triple core aliens and stuff, and it's it's good flavor and stuff, yeah, but it was mostly just me being lazy and saying, hey, what do I have sitting around my desk pre-built? Let's put that in the recurve, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, but the, the cool thing about the recurve is you just fit like a big fucking enormous coil in there, right? Just one huge fuse clamped in it, and you're good to go. And I don't mean huge by like triple or quadruple core fuse clamped in, just a regular dual core fuse clamped in with a enormous inner diameter like 3.25 3.5 or three you know three millimeters in diameter yeah i think i ha was using like framed staples in it from um two tall's friend uh ramo oh i do those frame staples are badass i love those things yeah. but i i ran out of them i'm kind of i need to harass two tall to get some more well they're awesome coils but yeah i've been using them for long enough that like i actually started doing coil gunk like up in the wraps and stuff so i think i got about three months off one coil and was like oh shit let's 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 switch to the other like super fancy coils that i have for some reason because my life makes no sense no i remember i traded too tall some stuff or he just sent me some stuff i can't remember but he sent me a bunch of them from his friend and they each one of those coils lasted for like ever and ever yeah these, these juggernauts i'm getting like i don't know, like two three weeks out of them maybe a month I think, I've, yeah, I've changed it twice since I got the recurve, so. Um, but, yeah, it lasts forever. They're pretty sturdy. Yeah, I think I have a set of the frame staples that I got. I think they're frame staples. There's no way that's going to really show up on video. But I've got a set. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, I've got a set in the dead rabbit right now, and it's, like, blowing my face off each time I try to vape on it. But Yeah, they're just too much heat for me when you get that big, you know, like. Yeah. I'm kind of a bitch, I guess, but I don't like it. I don't, I don't like my vape super hot. 
like i don't even like it like if i'm on temp control like i don't like pushing it to 400 degrees because it just like blows my face off uh see if i'm on temp control i'm usually like up around 450 but yeah like 400 is like my max like anything higher than that and i just can't handle it like it's just too damn hot plus the recurve is really it it doesn't seem short but since like the bottom half of it is just the build deck it's actually really a really short rda See, I've got an awesome solution to that. That weird, amazing drip tip that Jarvis sent me that's taller than the actual recurve itself. <laughs> I think it's so fucking phallic. You have to bring that to the convention so you can threaten people with it. Dude, like, she has some of them that are, like, four times the size. Like, she was vaping on something that looked like a soda can. Like, it made me a little nervous in a very, like, Freudian way. Well, I mean, I'd probably use it. Because, <laughs> like, I can't handle, like, super hot vapor. It drives me nuts, man. Yeah. Like the cool thing about the recurve though is that I really like the like I don't have to fuck with the airflow. Like it's just restrictive enough all the way open that it's just fine. That I don't have to mess around with it. No, and it definitely like as somebody who uses like the OG like recoils and stuff, like with the flavor cap, like the amount of air I'm getting from the recurve is pretty much perfect. Just straight wide the fuck open. Yeah, no, it's, I don't have to fight with it. I felt the same way about the Ghoul RDA, which is like my daily driver for work and everything else, because it's on my my Charon fucking beat ass uh, fucking mod. Oh, we haven't talked about the profile RDA. I think that's one of the mesh ones. I don't know. I'm still dragging my feet yeah, on the mesh it. thing. Yeah, I, I hear good things about mesh, but mesh has been like a thing in the past and it didn't perform very well. Like it's not the first time that people have um, tried to make the the mesh thing work. And because mesh was like a thing way back in like the early RTAs, right? Like the K funds and things like that. Um, I mean, I, I just I just now switched away from using round wire almost exclusively, so I'm not the person in terms of like new coil developments. Right. Um, that mesh looks diff. It's a little different than the typical mesh. I don't. I don't know how I feel about that airflow though, sitting like right under where the cotton comes in. Like it's like the airflow is like literally right on the cotton. Is it is the airflow on the side or is it like up yeah, underneath it, the cotton? What is this dip here? Oh no, it's just this. It's just never mind. That's I'm wrong. I was looking at it wrong. <laughs> I'm tired. Sorry guys. Uh, it's still weird though. Like I don't, I don't know. I mean, it might be it might be nice. Like mesh gives you a really wide surface area, but a really low gauge wire, right? So it's like. Um, I don't know. Some people say they really love it, but I haven't, I haven't. Back in the day, I tried it and it didn't go very well for me. But the mesh didn't look the same as that, so maybe it's the mesh was denser, so maybe it was a difference in heat. It was, like that mesh looked like it had pretty big gaps in between the. Yeah, it looked like a discrete like heating element kind of thing instead of just like here's some fucking tiny chicken wire. Yeah, yeah, definitely, it definitely looks a lot different. Okay, so the old stuff just like look like, like the shit you buy to to make screens for your sinks and shit, right? Yeah. Like, and I was just like, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. So maybe I will try a mesh RDA at some point, and maybe that will be the one. So that's that's about my level of. <laughs> well, the price range is right. I mean, it's only thirty two bucks for a new one, so it'd be worth checking out. I might check it out. Maybe maybe after after the big convention, or maybe I'll just like. I don't know, pour myself out for some free gear while I'm at the convention, which is probably going to happen. I Just need bang out some hand jobs real quick. I need some new shit. Like, I, <laughs> I mean, it's cool. Like, I'll just bring a bottle of lotion. <laughs> Bryson, if you hear me, I need new I need new equipment. I'll be ready. My hands are moisturized. Who could say no to that setup? <laughs> That's it. As long as you promise not to get any of my beard, because it's really hard to get out of there. My moist hands and luscious beard. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways. <clears throat> right, baby Bigfoot, the mesh is just perforated sheet of metal, but the like it's the size of the perforation that really makes the difference, right? Like if it's just really tiny holes, then it's just not. Shit, looking at that mesh, it reminds me a little bit of what uh, they were trying to do with those notch coils that were around for a second. Oh, I remember those. I never tried one, but I heard a lot of people talk about them. I like, mean, I just, they, they I'm usually like the, I'm like the last one to get on the 
the new coil train, right? Like I, I didn't start building Clapton until they'd been out for like a year or more, probably, maybe, maybe probably even longer. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely worth a shot. I'll pick one up when I see one for cheap, basically, or the next time I'm, like, itching to burn off some PayPal money. Yeah, I don't really feel like I – like, I'm always – like, if I was unhappy with my, like, experience and I could definitely narrow it down to the coil, then, you know, maybe I would be more driven. But generally speaking, like, for day-to-day -day purposes, like, I don't really feel the need to have, like, a super excellent – any thoughts on what I could pair with carrot cake? Cream cheese icing. That's what I would put it with. Which carrot cake though? Who's carrot cake? Because I don't even there's like I don't tempered know. expectations. That that's what you can pair with carrot cake. <laughs> You're not incorrect, Mr. Horan. Uh most of the carrot cake concentrates I've tried have been disappointing to Did be, you try the vape train one? Diplomatic. I didn't get one. Do they have Yeah, one? I didn't get one. Either. Like, and I see that they have a carrot cake concentrate. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, yeah, Vape Train's vanilla buttercream frosting would be pretty good too. I mean, the Ola Rand's cream cheese icing is a pretty much rock solid, like, a uh, good choice. Um, but honestly, I'd get it to where you're happy with it, like, standalone. If you're having a problem with it standalone, it's not like grainy enough, maybe throw in some hazelnut or cookie or something, or TPA vanilla cupcake is like the cake if you ask me it's like the best cake flavoring on the market if, if you ask my personal opinion i've it's actually got oh sorry go ahead oh i was gonna say i've actually got a tester out right now for uh vape trains vanilla buttercream and some i've been vaping on and off for the day with like the vanilla cream and the vanilla ice cream yeah vape trains buttercream frosting it's pretty good stuff i i had yeah. i just did a bottle like last week with uh just it and harvest berry cap harvest berry which is like my de facto like cream test testing flavor just because i know harvest berry so well um <laughs> yeah before you start trying to like jump a bunch of icing in there just uh just get the cake where you want it first yeah flavor was hazelnut's good for cakes man it's good i mean everything. hot take but i think vape trains buttercream icing is very much better than um Lorenz. I was gonna say caps. Oh yeah, so I only like their buttercream for like not actual buttercream applications. Like I don't treat it like a buttercream because it's, it's just not. mostly waxy as fuck, right? Like that's what I get from it is I get like a very sticky, waxy mouthfeel. I don't get a ton of flavor off. It's of like it. a, it's like a sticky version of the vanilla custard to me, right? Like a waxy, thicker, whatever like plastic custard does that make sense yeah that, totally like, like they just yeah. traded out the egg for for waxy frosting <laughs> for candle <laughs> yeah pretty much but it's still useful like i used it in butter cookies and it came in super helpful but um just to help me like because you it kind of binds with sucralose so you can create a more like granulated kind of sugar vibe i have the wonder flavors buttercream icing too and i really like it but it's kind of on the thin side when you think about icing. Like the flavor's there, but like it just doesn't have the body for me. I like it though. It's, it's still a good flavor. It doesn't have the same body, I think, as Vape Trains or Lorenz. But Lorenz almost has like too much body and it like takes over stuff really fast. Because it can like just trash all your bakery notes and it, and then it's just like, you know, whatever flavored icing. Dr. Steve Brule, the green apple candy, the green apple hard candy they just released. Absolutely and completely worth it. I don't know what the hell to do with it without making just a Jolly Rancher out of it or adding maybe some more fruit on top, like a strawberry or something. But it is a rock solid hard candy, green apple hard candy flavor. Uh, the Cap Candy Watermelon has, it's interesting, it has that bubblicious like candy rind note. So it has that going for it, but it's still a little thin. It's still a little bit floral so it needs a lot of work but it's pretty good jumping off point yeah i haven't picked up any of the new i have the butter toffee base but i haven't gotten to it yet it does have a little bit of a butyric vibe to it i smelled it but i think that um, was the one that i think graham and shindo were like daring people to try it so i'm assuming it's kind of a weird one 
It could be. Uh, I mean, toffee is like dark, right? And it's a tough, it's a tough thing to like. I don't know. It's a tough thing to translate into like a butter toffee. I'm not even sure what butter toffee is, but when I think about toffee, I just think of like that hard crack toffee shit, right? Yeah, know. and then when you're talking about vape train base, like their base basically means a flavor modifier. Their bases aren't what you'd think base would mean where you just grab one flavor and go like they're flavor modifiers to change around the rest of rest of a recipe. Okay. So butter toffee is just like kind of like a caramel, but with milk. Right. So it's just like, uh, see there's, there, there's Graham telling him to knuckle test the butter toffee base. So yeah, it's going to be a weird one. <laughs> Uh, I'll see if I can find it so that I can cry. I don't actually you know what I think it's with my other stuff upstairs. So no, I won't. But I'll <laughs> knuckle test it later. I will. I promise. Oh, I want to like, get up and turn my lights on and like take my headset off. It's, really, it's too much work. Too much work. Uh, bring, bring 10 bucks to the Vape Expo and I'll see. <laughs> Uh, Rusty wants to create a master list of peppery flavors for pepper tasters with rating how extreme the pepper is. Yeah, so that's mostly just the, anything that's vaguely rich or buttery from TPA is the big ones for me. And then, like, you get it occasionally with some of the cap stuff that's a little bit richer, too. Yeah, I get it more from the cap stuff than I do from TPA personally. So I'm not sure where the... Uh, and only sometimes, and really just with their... Um, I have to think about it now because I haven't used any of that stuff in a long time. If I take any of their, it's it's really the butter, right? So uh, whatever they're using in their in their butter, if I, I think take it over 0.25, it just like turns to pepper. But if I keep it low, it's fine. I think it's that like those flavors are basically just straight acetylpropanol. Yeah, I think, I, but I don't know what it is like that I pick it up differently from cat than I do from TPA because. Like TPA's V-Bic and, and custard, I don't get anything. Like I don't get anything peppery from it. Unless I take them up to like 10% or something stupid. Like I think it's just because like I've had some flavors that have a lot of acetylpropanol in them before. And there's something about the acetylpropanol that TFA uses for me that's a little bit like more aggressive. Like I know that liquid Barnes vanilla ice cream has a shit ton of acetylpropanol in there too. And I do get some black pepper, but it's not nearly as aggressive. So I'm guessing it's something about their acetylpropanol specifically that really sets me off. I think it's, I think maybe it's more of an interaction. So maybe not specifically the acetylpropanol, but how it's interacting with something else they're using. Yeah. So maybe however they're building their base around the AP. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it'd be my guess because I get it a lot worse with TPA than I do the other ones. I'm a pretty hard black pepper taster. Right, and I've always heard that, but I, the only time I've ever noticed it was when I push TPA way too high or in cap. And I catch I catch it in cap sometimes um, in any of the cap vanillas, especially their French vanilla. That's the one I was thinking about, French vanilla. I get it in their French vanilla, which is one that I've never I, – I don't recall ever hearing anybody else ever saying they get black pepper from it. But I like their French vanilla as long as I don't take it over like 2%. See, I like their V2 French vanilla quite a bit more than... Yeah, it was actually pretty good. Yeah. yeah, their V2 is good if you give it a little bit of extra time, and it doesn't get as weird for me as their V1. Their V1, like, I don't even necessarily get black pepper. It just tastes kind of, like, Play-Doh-y to me. Yeah, it is a little Play-Doh-y, but it's, the Play-Doh can be helpful. Like, I like I like, I, like, I, I like the purpose it can serve if you, if you can learn to tame it, right? At least for me, but I'm weird, right? Just Plato and black pepper. That's that's the way to make. That's it what I like, guys. Plato. <laughs> that's what you're vaping when you buy my one shots. Plato and black pepper. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't. I don't have any custards on it. Well, I have one custard. I have one because I Wiz Labs has my custard. My my only custard on the market. But it's all oaky and masculine, so it's you wouldn't even delicious. notice black pepper. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. There's so much bourbon in it, you can't tell the difference. Yeah. <laughs> that's the trick. You just cover it in booze. Can I say it works, man? Works so, time. do you know what like the scientific term for like that Plato <laughs> toast is? Because I've just taken to to calling it phenolic, and I think I got that from like the off flavor description for beer. So I don't know what that actual like taste is called. You know, I don't know because it's kind of like 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't probably there's probably a scientific term for it, but uh, off the top of my head, I don't know it. Hella scientific terms. If I if I had enough uh, brain power left to like do some Google searching, right? Like maybe, but it's kind of like a weird. We're in like a weird area of like an emerging like flavor science or whatever, right? Because this is all new shit. Uh, using flavors like flavorings as an inhalant as opposed to like in a traditional food application. Oh, uh, I need a minute. I'll be right back. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, it's it's not quite perfumery. It's not quite like actual food. We live in this weird bastardized area, and it's illegal in a lot of places. So it all just it all just goes horribly off the rails. <laughs> Like white kindergarten paste. That's the best kind of white kindergarten paste. Did anybody else think that the paste was kind of minty? Like, I seem to remember that being like having like a vaguely menthol thing to it. So, I wonder if that's just me. <laughs> Gopple's off strangling people right now. He's going to add to his uh, collection of ears on his necklace. So, if he comes back covered in blood, everybody start freaking out, okay? See, there we go. Graham. Yes. Excellent. All of these people have eaten paste and they agree with me that it's kind of minty. This is all of the validation I needed in my entire life. <laughs> no, I wasn't looking for the butter toffee base. Sorry, Graham. No, it's it's okay. I started talking about how uh, the the paste in uh, elementary school tasted minty. It does. <laughs> yeah. See, here we go. I can fill time really well by talking about eating paste. Yeah, I like it. I never ate paste because we didn't have paste by then. Like it was just glue. They wouldn't let us have that. I Want mean, your necklace. No, you can't see it. It's deeply personal. <laughs> It's fine. Occasionally he comes back covered in blood and looking slightly more relaxed. Don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> that's 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 why I'm going to Vegas so I can eat some paste covered lamb with Grant. <laughs> oh god. It's going to be fun. Everybody's going to die of something. <laughs> I'm like equal parts excited and terrified for Vegas. Uh, I'm excited to see everybody and to maybe cut some deals with some new juice vendors. Uh, I'm also excited, or, um, but I'm also terrified that you're all going to have to see me. Yeah. And what, what is likely my least sober and least, well, I mean, if you guys think I talk a lot of shit now. Yeah, it's only going <laughs> to get worse from there. If you, yeah, and I've, all, I've never had a beer before the show, so I mean. I am um, I am going to be there and stone ass sober so everybody can everybody can just send their pity towards me. I would appreciate it. <laughs> fine, it's fine. It'll be good. It'll be good. <laughs> Somebody has to try to break up the fights, right? <laughs> I mean like the chef's the chef's gang is going to be there. Yeah, you know. And I like I can't go to Vegas and get a chance to hang out with Lewis and Carl and be sober all in the same sentence. Like I, I just don't feel like it's reasonable. No, it's not, I'm, it's not. I'm, I'm definitely not begrudging anybody. I'm just saying, like, I'm going to be the fairly passive observer when this train goes off the rails. Yeah, I don't gamble either. No gambling. There'll be no gambling. That's a waste. <laughs> that's a waste of beer money. <laughs> right. Let's just be clear about where my priorities are. Yeah, I don't not, gamble either. I'm not, I'm not particularly excited about cocaine or hookers either, really, because I'm kind of allergic to STDs. And whenever I get, whenever I have cocaine, like I, I break out in felonies. So it's, <laughs> um, it's not my thing, right? Well, it's it's gonna be. <laughs> Actually, beer. I like that burgundy. Beer is a waste of crack money. There we yeah. go. Beer, beer is dangerous enough for me now. I'm old. <laughs> I'm retired from all this other things. No, my plan is to go and hang out with you people, but I'm going to be drinking a whole bunch of 
like glasses of tonic water, hoping nobody realizes that I still have my shit about me while everything goes off the rails. Yeah. It'll be good. It'll be good. I gotta look for a hotel too. I've been like really bad about like planning my itinerary or whatever. <laughs> You're just gonna figure you'll magically end up in Vegas somehow. Well, I mean, there's still like two months, right? Yeah. Or a month and a half. Like, you're just a tumbleweed. You go where the wind takes you. And I've been trying to like cram overtime in this month so that I have like some maybe a little extra like cash in my pocket when I go. I mean, even though I'm going to take all of your money in the contest. Yeah, probably. But I'm going to need that cash money to the fund my shenanigans, so I can't lose. Um, I'm you know honestly, I'm going to like shoot for the stars. I I think that hopefully I can win something. Well, there's like two separate things going, right? So Liquid Barn is picking up some stuff and Chefs is picking up some stuff. And I think there's some other shit going on. I talked to Gary at ECX. He says they might be making an appearance. I still need to get a hold of Danny over Decadent Vapors. He usually does the whole the whole, the whole whole circuit. So I feel like they should be there. I am gonna. I need to email him. Mostly so I can get him to bring me some Dandelion and Burdock. <laughs> if you're watching, Danny. Yeah, no, just smuggle us some, some Dandelion and Burdock. I need, I need you to bring me a gallon of Dandelion and Burdock. To the Vegas Expo, <laughs> not a leader. We need a gallon. Oh, Rick is going to be the kid who drinks margarita, makes their sans tequila at a party, and acts more drunk than everybody else. Yeah, no, I'm just going to fuck shit up. It's yeah. going to be good. It's going to be good, right? I'm so wasted on my fucking tonic waters. If it were for you guys, if I if I went to Vegas by myself, I would just get shit faced and like try to marry a pinball machine. Right? <laughs> don't let me stop you on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I love pinball, right? I don't, I don't like want to get in the way of true love like that. You know they have an entire museum there. I'm sure you can get arrested. I'm, I'm, I'm fully aware of the museum. <laughs> I want to try to make it there because I love pinball that much. I really love pinball, like a lot. It's like my favorite thing. Graham's going to fuck shit up for real. That doesn't surprise anybody. Right. Graham's going to like try to park his trailer inside the convention. <laughs> Like he's just gonna park in the parking lot and start like flipping fucking like cheap DIY juice out of the parking lot, just try to make sure the vendors don't make any sales. Right. So Graham's gonna try to ruin everything we have going for us. Thanks. This is why we can't have nice things. I mean, all hey, you offer me more money than Favor, I'll definitely work your sketchy like booth in the parking lot. I'm into it. Yeah, I mean, if you can if you can step it up, man. You're going to have to have some contests, though, Graham, and they can't just be uh, who can go further down on the fruit. Just saying. Nice. Well, I mean, we could have like a wet t-shirt contest or something, right? Which would be surprisingly interesting given the state of most of our physiques. So, yeah. I am not an impressively built man anymore. So <laughs> I'll just be clear about that now. So it's just don't be disappointed when anybody anybody sees us live and realizes there's a reason for these camera angles. Yeah, it's all it's all up here for a reason, right? From the <laughs> shoulders up, I look all right, but like down here, different story. <laughs> Everything underneath here is a mess. <laughs> it's a giant mess. There's like uh, scars and fat in weird places. It's, it's not good. Just weird places you wouldn't expect either, and a whole lot of it in those weird places. Right? Like, it's, I don't have a huge belly. It's just all coming out my lower back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you're perfectly fit everywhere except the muffin top area. And then it's just a disaster. I need, like, a back bra. <laughs> I'm actually wearing, like, four girdles right now. So it, it only gets worse from here. And your Harkonnen hover chair is <laughs> on like a pedestal. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I can't believe it just came out of my mouth. That was good. Yeah, no, I'll take the I'll take the Dune joke. Yeah. Fucking Adam's gonna show up in like a back to tank, which isn't right. Dune, but same basic. That's all right. That's good. That's good. And a back to tank. He'll probably need it after what we do to him when he's down here. There's no way Adam gets out of this unscathed. Sorry, Adam. Not sorry. Somehow you're going to get the worst of it. <laughs> I, hope, I hope his wife's not watching. She won't let him go then. Hey, she's coming with him. Is she coming with him? Yeah, they're going to stay at like a fancy hotel and everything because he's too good for us. 
I just wanted to find like the cheapest place that I can like not drive from, right? Whatever. If you guys want to stay somewhere cheap as fuck, I don't care. I'm, I'm, as, long as, as long as I don't have to do battle with cockroaches, like I'm good. I'm going to sleep uh, underneath an overpass. I hear there's a pretty thriving community of people in Las Vegas who do that. So, 20 minute stream on location in Vegas. Uh, Rusty, actually, I think there's plans. Uh, Ryson from Flavora mentioned that there's going to be an opportunity for some of that. So, I don't know if it'll be through our channel, but. It'll definitely be in the groups, and there will be streams available. I, I'm sure Wayne's probably got some kind of plan. I'm pretty sure he's going to be there, right? That's the last I heard. So. Yeah. So I, I heard there will be some live stuff going on. So, yeah, there will definitely be an opportunity for people that are not there to watch and hang out. It's going to be pretty cool for the DIY scene. I think it's going to be like – I mean, it's going to be like the only big event this year like, or in even, even in years, right? Yeah. We don't have like a DIY thing. So, And it, it looks like we have a pretty big section of the convention. So, Well, and – if I see anybody from a major juice company, I am going to like strip down naked on my torso and threaten them and like see if they wanted to fist fight. So there's there's that going on. It's cool. Me and Charlie Noble. You watching? Dude, Charlie Charlie Noble isn't going. We were we were trying to shame him into going and now he big timed us. Ah, oh, did he really? Yeah. What a bummer. Now I'm gonna have to like pick a fight with Vape Wild, and that's no fucking good. Hey, dude, the Vape Wild people at that last convention I went to were, like, super nice. Like, I have four of their inflatable flamingo koozies, and my girlfriend wears a Vape Wild t-shirt to bed now, so I can't talk shit about Vape Wild. Yeah, you know, as much as I don't care much for their flavors specifically, like, as a company, they've always been pretty legit. I think they're all right. Like, this is a juice company. I think they're fine. I don't have any problem with them. They sell, like, lower budget stuff or whatever, but it's it's cool. Like, who cares? I mean, people love it, obviously, or they wouldn't be such a big company. Yeah, and those flamingo coasters, they're inflatable pink flamingo coasters, and they're pretty pretty—they're pretty nifty, so I can't talk any more shit. Well, I mean, that pretty much just... Yeah. All right, then. There we go. And Dr. Kermes won't be around for us to insult endlessly, so I don't know, I don't know who I'll pick a fight with. I um, would pick a fight with Jay Hayes if I had the chance. I don't even know who that is. Who is that? Uh, he's a guy who says bad things about things on the internet. Oh, okay. Well, if he's there, I'll find him then. Just yeah. point him, point me in this direction. I'll take care of it. And not because I'm particularly good at fighting, but I'm a big guy, and I'm like Homer Simpson in that boxing episode. I have a real thick skull. All I got to do is collapse on top of somebody. Well, I'm pretty good at hurting people without actually leaving a mark so that the police can't catch me. I can do that. It'll be oh, awesome. no. I'm, 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 just, I'm just real good at getting punched, but... <laughs> I think the part of that's my winning personality. It happens occasionally. I'm like the juggernaut if the juggernaut just mostly stood there and looked at and looked bored. <laughs> I feel like if the juggernaut were an honest comic book, that's what he would do. Right? <laughs> like if he didn't have anything to fear, like fighting would be boring. Why would you do it? Like, it would be it would just not be exciting. Uh, it he fights because the god Sidorak commands him to because he's his avatar on Earth. Read your comics. Oh, god damn it, Rick. I know, right? Fucking fucking Sidorak what reference right there. What an asshole. I know, seriously. Fucking no, actually, Marco yeah. ain't got shit on me. I haven't read comic books since like the nineties. Pretty bad about that. <clears throat> I oh, loved him in the night. I read him like crazy in the nineties, man. I would read like Ghost Rider every week when it came out. I was pumped up. I can't afford like weekly comic books and stuff. I'll still catch up occasionally on the trades. Um, and maybe there's some illegal downloading in there somewhere. Uh, but I mean, I still like comic books for what they are. Yeah. No, you I know? mean they're they're a, good, they're a great format. Like I just it's rare that I have the time to sit down and read a regular book or a comic book. Like I just don't have that kind of I can't make that kind of commitment to an ongoing thing, right? Like, I'm lucky to binge Netflix like once a month at this point. Like, I, I just like, uh, I like specifically some of the superhero comics just because not everything has to be Tolstoy. And I kind of like speaks to my lizard brain. Like, I like my stories like nice and easy. There's like good people and bad people and cool shit happens. And I'm completely cool with that. Uh, I don't know about that, that I'm a fucking adult. Like, that's kind of a stretch, Graham. Like, I mean, like I realize I do like adult things sometimes. Like, I have a job and kids and stuff. But like, I mean, like at the end of the day, I really just want to get 
on my computer and play stupid video games. Like that's pretty much it, right? Like I I hardly ever get to do that, but I usually that's all I want. So I mean, there we go. There that is, right? And not yeah. even like not even like good games with like decent storytelling. I mean like bad PvP MMOs or something like that, right? Like I just I just want to get online and, and kill shit for a while and then I'm done. <laughs> good. Good after that. Yeah, I just didn't I just did another playthrough of Fallout New Vegas. So everybody knows exactly uh, where too, my life me is. Too, me too. And you know, every time I go, I'm, I always tell myself that I'm gonna do a Legion playthrough. You never do because you never want to be associated with us. And then, folks. and then I talk like you do the dialogue options for like the first three dudes, and then I get fucking furious and I kill everybody. One time though, I did do the thing where you can get uh, that you can force the doctor into be- curing Caesar's cancer or whatever. Yeah, by like selling him to yeah. Right, and then I shot Caesar immediately afterwards, <laughs> and it was worth every like, every bit of effort. It was glorious. I, it took me like till the seventh playthrough to even figure out that uh, yes, man was in what's his name's apartment though, because like I just never, I just always did what the fuck ever. I'm just saying, if you're playing Fallout New Vegas and you pick anybody but Cass as your companion, you're just fucked. It's all about Rex and Cass. I'm for it. I usually don't even do the companion thing though, like half the time. Like I just. Blast because I always I always have to end up having to like look around for them or I lose them and then you have to do that thing where you fast travel back to wherever you were last to pick them up again. Yeah. Or it takes them like fucking eight hours to get catch up to you. And you're like, come on. I have to do the T to wait thing or whatever. So um we're theoretically talking about mixing. What have you been working on? Oh Anything yeah. Fun. <laughs> um well I've been working on a around for a client so i haven't had a lot of time to do like fun mixing but in between i have been vaping a monstrous amount of flavora wild melon with eucalyptus with mint it's like my new favorite pairing Ugh. i'm just not on board with like i get the eucalyptus with mint as like a utility like i don't want to feel my sinuses anymore but like the more i vape of that stuff the more i don't like it i love it man but only it's only so I'm only using it like as an accent as opposed to like as a flavor, right? So it's just like an alternative to WS23 at this point, like at the level I have it at, like, because I'm only using like 0.15%. So it's more like like cactus, right? Like at that point, like I get a vague, the eucalyptus kind of like pushes up the rind, the tiny bit of rind in wild melon. And then the mint just touches up, like touches it off. And the mint is really predominant at that level, and the eucalyptus doesn't really stand out as much. Um, so I used to vape it like I mean, you know me, like I used to vape it just like a two and a half percent all the time by itself and loved it. I am working on a ginger thing right now, too. Um, have you messed with Vape Train's ginger root yet? Yeah, it's good it's not like spot on to fresh ginger but it leans that way more than most of the other ginger concentrates yeah the only, my only problem because i really like it but i'm getting like a kind of funky dryness on the back end of it that i can't seem to shore up yet do you get that at all like when i'm pushing it to like yeah. one and a half ish percent maybe i just kind of chalked it up to it being a ginger and having that like kind of like musty like dried spice note you get from a lot of them so like the beginning is like super fresh and promising and then it kind of ends up being kind of musty but at least it's going in the right direction what cooling would i use for an iced coffee so i've actually tried that right with like wonder flavors uh brazilian coffee which is probably my favorite coffee flavoring and it just it doesn't i don't know maybe it's just me but like so i tried it with ws23 culotta and a couple other things and it just doesn't really hit the right vibe for me like it's still not it's weird it's like having coffee in a menthol cigarette like it's not the same as like like a literal iced coffee maybe it's because it's like not quite sweet enough to really hit like the whole starbucks iced coffee thing but like the two don't they don't merge for me at least in the experience maybe they do for others but I definitely wouldn't recommend it because I obviously haven't tried it, but it seems like that might be like a very specific use case for WS5 because it has some of the bite of menthol, but it also has like a little bit of a savory note to it. Oh, you know, that's a good idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that. WS5 is probably a good, yeah. I have WS5. I don't know why I didn't didn't even think of trying to do that. Because I tried to nail an iced coffee like 
don't know, it's probably been a year since when Wonder Flavors first sent it to me because I knew that like Wonder Flavors coffee is probably like the their Brazilian coffee is probably like just the perfect spot for that kind of thing where you could go that direction by itself without needing like to fuck with it. Like there are other coffee flavorings out there that are decent, but they all need help of some kind. Like the the flavor art coffees are okay, but they're hard to work with um, on their own and they have some weird off notes and like caps and TPAs and flavor West coffees are all basically trash to me. I can't stand them. Um, the vape train Arabica coffee wasn't fantastic, but it also wasn't bad. It's kind of like a bitter percolator style coffee where it's absolutely hammered, but it didn't have too much of that skunkiness. So I kind of want to. Is it sweet? Um, no, not really. Oh, well, actually, that, that's actually pretty interesting because, like, when I make coffee at home, it's basically like that, right? Like, I, I just make hobo coffee, you know? Like, I boil yeah. it in a pot. Like, I don't. I don't do a percolator. I don't do a French press. Like I just put that shit in a boiling pot of water and then I do the ice cube thing. Yeah. And then it's fine. It's and fine. then just fucking hammer it. Yeah. The, that Arabica coffee, it has a little bit of skunkiness in it, but it really isn't bad. And it does have that kind of like dirty coffee ground kind of thing going on. What do I think of like a grape juice or grape lollipop? If I was going candy grape, yeah, so the boy is good, but it's almost too juicy for candy. Like I'd probably go with Inaware. Oh, I think they were asking it. about Delosi grape. Ooh, I don't have Delosi. I don't have anything Delosi. Yeah, Graham Graham gets a kickback on Delosi. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> well, thanks for that, Graham. Thanks for shilling in my chat. Appreciate it, brother. Oh, grape soda. Um TPA grape soda. Have grape soda on its way from Bull City. Two weeks and still taste flavora guava. Okay. Well, flavora guava is a really strong flavor. Like, it's pretty aggressive. Uh, and anything you mix it with it, you're not going to cover it up. You're just not going to do it. Unless it's like 0.15% or something. But yeah, it's just, it's a strong flavor. Dude, I've been going back into like normal flavor West grape. I think I like normal flavor West grape quite a bit. I'm not a big fan of grape soda, but I like their normal grape. Yeah, their straightforward grape is pretty good. It's it's really reasonable and it's pretty flexible. I like grape soda too. You know me, I'm weird. I love <laughs> that stuff. It it'll completely fucking ruin your atomizer in about two hours, but it's glorious for all two hours. Just just purple sucralose. That's what that Dude, is. It's so fucking good with like I like to do like fifty fifty, like seven percent grape soda, seven percent flavor west jungle juice, and I it's the dumbest like face like full of fucking sucrose completely ruin your coils and probably give you cancer recipe on the planet but it's fucking glorious I, I just love it man it's easy as fuck and it's really sweet and whatever it's good if you don't like it you're wrong <laughs> uh at the convention see if you can taste the cold brew iced coffee they did a great job with that i will keep a lookout for that whose is it I don't know, but I'm assuming if it's cold brew, iced coffee will be able to tell. But yeah, I'm always Benjamin, down for a coffee vape. Not that I ever enjoy them, but I want to see what they're doing with them. Benjamin, you're you're in the UK, right? So you're talking about a chef's thing? No, he's in Australia. Australia. I thought I saw him in the chef's group, so I assumed. Cold brew iced coffee at vape train, probably then? I think it's a finished juice. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll check it out. I, mean, I'll, I don't know how much time we're going to have to like actually run around and run amok. Because both days are open to the public, so I have a feeling we're going to be tied down a lot. We're just going to be that's cool with me. We're just going to be the pack of jackals wandering around trying people's juice and like trying to be polite about it and coming off like the biggest DIY dickheads in the entire world. So we got high goals. Pretty much like I'm just there to give DIY a bad name, right? Like Wayne, <laughs> Wayne can be the Wayne can be the shining star, and I'm just there to fuck your life up. Hey, Fresh is going to be there too. Fresh will be the positive one. He makes gonna, up for the rest of us. I'm going to walk around the whole convention trying to get everybody just to vape five uh, percent cactus or like three percent uke with mint or something. Like that's my mission. <laughs> Try this, man. It's innovative. <laughs> I'll be a little disappointed if they don't just give us t-shirts that say DIY or douche. Um, I'm assuming that we're going to be treated like second class citizens. We'll probably be like branded as we walk in and like herded into our own very specific room without access privileges. I'm pretty sure they're going to shackle us to the kiosk. 
yeah, make us mix on little drug scales and give out samples to people. It would be a good time. Bryson just said they're probably not even bringing scales, or they're going to bring a few or something. So uh, I'll probably pack mine. I'm worried about taking it on a flight, so we'll see how I end up getting there before I decide if I'm going to bring one. Yeah, it's going to be like um, death of a salesman. Like first prize, win some money. Second prize, get some steak knives. And then third through 12th place just gets shot in the middle of the conference floor. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So we got that going for us. So if you can't tell, guys, we're pretty pumped up about Vegas. So if you're going to be in the area, you should come hang out with us or at least come be embarrassed about being in our presence. Right. Take a selfie. You know, don't tell your mom because she'll make fun of you. <laughs> yes, that's that's exactly where we're going, Scott Miller. We're basically monkeys. We're going to be chained to our mix tables and we're going to get beaten if we don't smile. Uh, Vegas is November 9th and 10th, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, November 9th and 10th. Some of us will be in like a little bit early, but we'll be like sightseeing. And by that, I mean Rick will be scraping me off the bar, the floor of every bar in between the, you know. It means Cobble's going to get arrested in the pinball museum for exposing himself. It's not, it's not exposure if I just get it all the way in before anybody catches me. <laughs> You're going to drag in a pinball machine. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, do uh, do we have any sort of planned presentation? Um, I don't really know. There's like an itinerary of like some mixing contests and some like public time where we'll just be like chilling on and giving out samples and like mixing for people who want to try something like whatever or have questions about DIY. And then, then probably a lot of poor judgment, uh, lack of self-control and, you know, the rest of the things that come with being in Vegas. Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna bet it all on black. That's what we're gonna yeah. do. A lot, a lot of, a lot of one shot shilling. So, be ready for me to try to sell you a car or something <laughs> when you get there, right? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna just try to sell ourselves out. We're gonna have signs. It's gonna be like a meat market. Yeah, we'll mix for sexual favors. <laughs> That's what mine's gonna say. I don't need any sexual favors from these people. Vape people are weird. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not picky. I just, I just need tacos. I'm not, a, I'm not a proud man. I do want tacos, though. Yeah. Are there good tacos in Vegas? I've been to Vegas in like a decade, right? Or even it's been maybe even been even longer than that. There was Vegas. good tacos last time. I'm sure there's probably good tacos still. Some things don't change, right? Fucking shout out to Sheck Juarez for buying our one shots. It's a very good thing to go through a cherry phase. I know there's at least two really good cherries in the chef's releases. And they're both yours? Uh, no, one of them is mine, and the other inferior one is Dave. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that's right. He did the Penny Whiz, right? Yeah. Glad you like the one-shots, man. They're pretty good. I We like them. They were fun to put together. We're working on our next, uh, next round for chefs, so keep an eye out in the next month or two. We'll have some... Pretty exciting, uh, pretty exciting news for you guys concerning our our evolving relationship with chefs. And by evolving, I mean intimate. Dude, I I'm gonna you're gonna have to wait in line. Apparently, everybody wants to bang Carl. So, do you ever seen the guy? Yeah, I mean he's he is a dreamboat. Yeah, do you remember that clip of him at the like when he did when they did the. Their that first live stream when we did the 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 twenty eight release or whatever, yeah, that clip in the beginning man it kills me every fucking time. Was that Carl or was that Lewis? So the swearing on the other end of the phone, yeah, about how they're gonna retire on Barry Island instead of the Barbados or whatever. Yeah, that was that's Carl. <laughs> it was Carl. It was a message that Carl had left for Lewis, chewing him out over giving away too much free shit all the time. And uh, Lewis saved it and put it in his live stream. It was glorious. I think he that's the biggest... that clip. He's supposed to send it to me, but I'm really sad he never did. I think the biggest question you have to ask yourself in life, it's like one of those old teen beat like magazine things. You got to ask yourself, are you a Lewis or are you a Carl? And I'm a Carl, baby. I'm a, uh, I'm trying to find a, like a clever way to mash up their names together, but I can't. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> you're you're a Luarl. <laughs> a Luarl. Uh, a a, a Cluis. I don't know. It's not working. Those guys are both pretty rad, though. I'm really I'm really pumped up to meet the gang. I don't know. They're bringing some of their staff with them too, but I'm not sure who. So it should be an interesting gang. I, they always bring like a gaggle. It'll be pretty cool. I get, I'm pretty pumped up about it. I just I can't help but get the feeling they're going to be deeply. Oh, there we go. Adams or Lewis. Um, I just can't help but get the feeling they're going to be deeply disappointed when they realize that we're all barely functional human beings held together by bailing wire and uh, self-loathing. Yeah. I'm basically fueled by PG at this point. It's not <laughs> like it's not really high octane, guys. <laughs> Practice show. Says the guy who isn't here. You with that pretty headshot of yours. You left it to us. You come hang out with us, Adam. You can't hang out with the peasants anymore <laughs> from your garage because your wife won't let you stream in the house. <laughs> oh, Red Bull recipes. Um, You know, honestly, Flavor West Red Bull, like the actual bowl thing, gets kind of slept on. It's pretty fucking good for a single Red Bull flavor. I think it's good. The flavor art one, I can't remember what it's called. Is it like authentic. mad fruit or something? Yeah, it's it's authentic, but it's kind of it's kind of on the harsh side. Like it's got a good Red Bull flavor, but it's a little it's a little sharp, like passion fruit sharp. Hanks and Red Energy is also really good. I have a bottle of that. And I don't think I've ever opened it. Like I have a whole stack of Hanks and flavors that I just never opened because they're not generally accessible. By the masses, right? Since I have to like whatever, like consider the international market or whatever, right? <laughs> oh, what's monster? Monster is Green Goblin. Green Goblin it's, is it's on terrible. Fucking... I don't like it at all. I don't like Flavor West Green Goblin. I think it's disgusting. Some people love it though. So I mean, I mean, Monster is empirically gross. But yeah, like, it's pretty like accurate. I do not care for it. Like. Monster, all, so speaking of Plato, like Monster always, like that's the other place where I get that Plato off note. Like it has that weird, like Plato energy drink note. I can't get past like the Robitussin. Like I get like the serious medicinal level of sweetness from Monster. Like it's really medicinal to me. Like it's just like it's thick. It's just like drinking like when the soda fountain's busted and you're not getting any carbonated water and you just get straight syrup. That's what it tastes like to me. It's just horrible. <laughs> It's I, I can't stand. I mean, and I like rock stars. Like I drink a lot of rock stars, but I like cannot handle the level of sweetness. But I drink the sugar free rock stars. So this uh, this this pretty headshot over here is saying Vegas is going to be the best DIY event to date. Well, there's a reason for that, and that's because it's the only DIY event to date. At least it's well, been the only DIY like big event in a long time. So I think it's I think it's going to be pretty cool. I think most of the other DIY events were mostly just like circle jerks gone wrong in the parking lot of a friendly. So, yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. Not that I'm saying you shouldn't have a circle jerk in the parking lot of a friendly, but this is going to be slightly more organized. Slightly. Well, I mean, I don't know. Like, Bryson and, and Brandon seem like organized dudes. But oh, and we have to all remember to bring a banana with us, right? So that we can all make Brendan feel uncomfortable. <laughs> so I just want you all to remember that. Ever since he did that stream with Wayne, I I'm I'm looking forward to meeting the Moose Knuckle in person. That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be good. Uh, well, we could sing and dance, but I can't promise that it will be what you would consider entertaining. It's mostly just sad. It ends up with a bunch of pasty guys getting winded while trying to dance. Yeah, I would definitely get winded if I tried to dance. I mean, that's like, this counts for dancing. Right? Yeah, just a little. Yeah. Oof, well, well, I'm going to slow down. I need to lie down for a while. Mixed life. <laughs> and here we are. Here we are. That's like the most animated I think I've ever been on the camera before. How did it feel? A little uncomfortable. Like my, butt, my butt puckered up a little bit. <laughs> I 
I'm pretty pumped, and it'll be a good chance for me to check out that basic stuff from uh, the base, the basic base from uh, Liquid Barn. I haven't gotten any of it yet, so. Oh yeah, no, it's legit. Apparently, we are mixing it 16 percent because these bottles are set up for 16 percent. So. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to just like, adjust PG percentages or something to make it even. Because yeah. I, I mean, trying to nail like a recipe on short notice in a contest and like hit a specific percentage at the same time is kind of unreasonable but i mean we'll figure it out i'm sure i mean i'm just gonna fly blind really who knows i'm just gonna give him 16 percent flavor west grape soda just call it good i'll win dude nobody you'll can, win you win the popular vote with that nobody nobody can nobody can deny how good uh, flavor west grape soda is it's perfect it needs no help I was joking earlier that because uh, Dave and I, we were trying not to reignite the rivalry. We kind of reignited the rivalry, unfortunately. So I'm gonna, just going to mix 4% Alpine strawberry. No matter what the profile is, it's still going to win. So With flavor out cookie? Yeah, there we go. Crunchy strawberry cookie. It's going to be good. We'll have a pretty big pretty big team there, though. Most of us are going to make it, I think. Most of the e-juice makers will only be short a few. Yeah, we'll have a good good showing. Should be entertaining. So, yeah, make it there. Uh, links in the description for the Facebook group, all of our various one shots. And of course, be sure if you're new and looking for great information, check out the eJuice Makers website or the Flavor Pro, Pro website. It's all there in the in the thing. Do the do the smashing of the likes and do the bell and the things with the buttons. You know? Do you feel you know dirty? I felt weird. I don't, yeah, yeah, I felt dirty. You just gotta lean into it. Smash that like button. Welcome to our our new time slot. It seems like uh, we're at about the same spot as we were on Sunday, but um, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm good for for a sudden move. I think that works out pretty well. So thank you for all for watching. It's been a fantastic Wednesday, and you juice makers is out.